Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm talking to you about what kind of people do narcissists avoid? What kind of people do they not want to be around? So for starters, remember that narcissists have personalities. So not every narcissist is the same. And the type of narcissist that you're dealing with is also going to affect the type of person that they're attracted to. So if you're dealing with a, a, a overt narcissist, they're going to be attracted to somebody who's going to be different than a covert narcissist will be attracted to, for example. You also want to know what that narcissist's goals are. So the narcissist will always have goals, whether it's just to have an immediate supply source or whether it's because they are looking to gain something uh, in their work life or if they want to grow in their um, influence in a certain circle, uh, a certain um, social circle or something like that. There's always going to be a reason why the narcissist is connecting to people. So the goal of the narcissist is really going to be important to you because again, that's going to determine how hard they try to make that connection with, with that person um, and how necessary that person is for their goal. So I would say there's no type of person that a narcissist would avoid. The narcissist, even if they feel like um, like that person might be dangerous for them, like the, the person might expose who they truly are, the narcissist will usually try to like win over that person and get that person to be in their corner. Instead of trying to avoid that person, they'll try to like bring them closer, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, that kind of tactic with somebody who might uh, potentially expose them for who they are. Um, and if that doesn't work, then yes, the narcissist will avoid that person. Um, this is especially true, by the way, in, uh, religious narcissists. So if you're dealing with a religious narcissist, you'll notice that at first they're probably going to be tr trying to be like your best friend. They might have gifts that just show up at your, um, at your house or at your desk or, uh, whatever. Um, just like little, oh, I just saw this and I thought of you kind of a thing. I have a whole video that I where I talk about narcissists and gift giving and the reason that narcissists give gifts. It's never it's never just a, I thought of you here's a gift. There's always something attached to it. And so it's very important that you you know about that and what's going to be expected from you if you accept the gift from the narcissist. Um so narcissists will always try to, or will usually try to keep the person who might expose them or who might be a threat to uh, their, their facade that they're living close to them. And only if that doesn't work, will they try to avoid somebody. So, um, so yes, they will try to avoid the people who will be able to see through them, who will not be um, uh, convinced that, that everything is normal with them and that you can just have a normal relationship with them or that, uh, they they are who they say they are. Some people have such a gift of discernment that they can't be uh, convinced. They can't be convinced that the narcissist is normal no matter how much they do the right things, say the right things, uh, know the right people, etc. They will just will not fall for it. And those people, the narcissist is very intimidated by. And um, again, this is because narcissism is always it has a spiritual root. This isn't just something that happens in the natural. And it's because the spirit realm is responding to the authority that that person walks in. So the types of people narcissists will avoid, first of all, the type of person that can't be convinced, that can't be fooled, that they are who they say they are. They'll also avoid people who tend to use shame or humiliation in their normal life. So if you have somebody who thinks it's funny to um, like tease or make jokes with other people, a narcissist literally cannot handle that. So anybody who's trying to use shame where what the narcissist perceives to be shame, uh, they'll try to avoid those people as well. So, so they won't be friends or try to get close to the people who have that type of sense of humor. A narcissist really can only withstand so much of that before they really um, they really can't take it anymore. And the risk of having their whole facade um, kind of come down because they explode or they show that themselves uh, for who they truly are in an episode of narcissistic rage, the narcissist, again, is very calculating. So they'll be able to weigh the 
the risk and reward in this type of situation. So if the person, if they really, really, really have to be near that person or befriend that person or get that person to like them in order to get whatever it is that they want, they will calculate how long to be around that person or how to respond to them in these types of cer certain situations where they know that that type of humor will be used. Um, and especially if there's more than, if there's other people. So like one-on-one, -on -one, that's more tolerable to the narcissist than in a group if somebody is using uh, humor, even humor that involves shame uh, or humiliation or any kind of thing like that. Just even, and again, this is according to the narcissist point of view. It doesn't actually mean that you have to be shaming or humiliating them. It's just what they perceive to be shame or humiliation. Most people, I think that if you point out some kind of mistake that they make, uh, and it's, and it's a funny one that they'll laugh at themselves. They'll laugh at that mistake because it doesn't ruin their sense of self, their, their identity or any kind of thing like that. But with a narcissist, that's very damaging to them and they won't like that. And especially if there's other people who are witnessing and even participating in that type of humor. So they'll, they will weigh out how long they can be around that person. And especially when that person is with other people. Um, because they know that that's a part of that personality uh, of the person. And, and again, the narcissist won't, won't reveal who they truly are to people that they feel threatened by. So anybody who can destroy their facade, uh, they won't expose themselves for who they truly are. This is why it's very difficult for people who are um, victims of narcissistic abuse for a long period of time. Maybe you're married to a narcissist or... Uh, you have a sibling or a parent or something like that who's a narcissist, you're around them all of the time, they're, they're an integral part of your life, um, you know who they are because they're not afraid of you. They have shown you who, who uh, they truly are and they believe that there isn't anything that you can do to hurt them, to harm them because they believe that they have enough support or enough uh, people believing the facade that your word won't weigh out against the image that they've created for all of those other people. Um, and it can be very frustrating, obviously, and very invalidating when you know who that person is, but they, uh, they don't care that you know. They don't care that, that you know because they really believe that there's nothing that you can do about it. And finally, one more type of person that the narcissist won't uh, be attracted to or won't want to spend a lot of time with and especially won't try to use as a supply sort, uh, source is people who are just naturally not affectionate um, or or give admiration. So there are some people who just keep how they feel to themselves. They they won't praise you, but they won't criticize you either. They're just neutral on a lot of stuff. And narcissists will avoid those people because, again, it's always about supply for the narcissist for one reason or another. And if somebody isn't willing to give the narcissist praise and admiration, uh, being able to, to show some sort of um, affection and favor towards them, they're not going to like that. So the personality who um, doesn't show any kind of emotion, the narcissist won't like, which is why gray rock is such an effective uh, method to, um, to disconnecting the narcissist from you if you find that you're a, a supply for a narcissist. And it works regardless of the situation. So even if it's your boss or if it's your husband, it's going to work the same way um, because narcissists have to have that constant fueling and validation of who they are in order to, um, in order to feel a sense of calm or a sense of peace, a sense of normality. Um, this isn't a real source of peace of, um, of identity or any kind of thing like that, but it's how the narcissist is interpreting it when they receive this type of validation. Because again, they're energy vampires. They're just after your energy. And if you're not willing to give that out, I'm talking about people who aren't like on purpose practicing gray rock. They're just naturally not affectionate or naturally just not uh, that open and vocal with how they're feeling uh, and especially towards another person. And so those types of people, the narcissist isn't going to try to choose because um, they, they don't have the ability to give the narcissist what they need. 
I know a lot of you are probably thinking, what about people with boundaries? Won't the narcissist leave those people alone? And the answer is really yes and no. Um, the narcissist always views something as a challenge. It's a game. It's a way to practice and develop their narcissistic skills. So if you um, have boundaries, the narcissist is going to look at those boundaries as a game, as something to be overcome. And so that's very common um, for the narcissist to try harder with somebody who has firm boundaries. It isn't until you've proven yourself even for a very long time that you aren't giving in that the narcissist will leave you alone. This is why it's um, it's so so important that you are married to your boundaries for you first. This isn't something that you put on other people. It's something that you agree with your own self first before putting up boundaries and setting up consequences for those boundaries being breached. Uh, before you implement them, before you try to enforce them with other people, you really have to believe in them your own self. And so um, a narcissist, and especially if there's no way around you, if you're the gatekeeper to something that the narcissist wants, uh, the narcissist will just view your boundaries as, as, a, as something that they need to overcome as a game, as uh, a way to perfect and uh, hone their skills as a narcissist. So just having boundaries doesn't mean that you're going to repel narcissists. It just means that you're able to control how far into your life that they get, how much stuff from you they're able to um, extract. And um, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, that this society is becoming so narcissistic. There's more and more people with um, narcissistic traits that are left unchecked and even... Um, admired, even rewarded for having them, that you are going to continue to run into narcissists. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. This is really a life skill. This isn't something that just people who've been married to a narcissist or who uh, have worked for a narcissist need to learn. This is a real life skill about how to deal with a narcissist, about knowing your identity and setting your boundaries and everything else that I talk about on this channel. It's a life skill. This isn't just for a certain group of people. This is something that everybody is going to need. And especially if you have children, if you have children who are growing up in this society today, you need to know how to teach them about this. This is something that they will absolutely be dealing with. There's no question about it. So, um, so just having boundaries doesn't mean that you're going to um, repel the narcissist. It just means that you're able to control how far into your life they get. And you're able to um, choose uh, responses to the narcissist with more wisdom and uh, more understanding about where they're coming from so that there's no kind of back way that they can get in, which is common for people who don't understand what a narcissist is or how narcissistic abuse works they don't understand that the narcissist can find multiple ways into your life and somebody with boundaries is able to um to kind of cut off those avenues that the narcissist might use um if if the direct approach isn't going to work you guys i hope this video helped you i hope uh, you learned something from this video and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to my channel below and turn on the little bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel. 